Dodgers fucking suck, dude. Part two. <laughs> Again? <laughs> <laughs> So we fucking got on another losing streak, fucking bad one. This time there was no excuses. We had Bellinger, we had McKinstry, we have Gavin Lux, Max Muncy, Mookie, everybody. We have everybody. There's no fucking excuses this time. Before we could be like, hey, you know, we didn't have Cody, you know, threw off the rhythm. Now there's just like kind of no excuses. Yeah. You know, we have most of our starting pitchers, Bauer, Julio, Walker, Kershaw, Tony Gonsolin's back. Gonsolin, He's starting yeah. to pitch yep. more innings now. We have our guys. There's no more fucking bullshit excuses that we can make anymore. Um, very quickly though, before we go, uh, we're not talk- We're not going to be talking about do- uh, the Dodgers this entire. So I just wanted to talk about uh, the Dodgers just a little bit. But I just want to give a disclaimer. Our, my fucking camera's broken apparently. So if the frame rate's bad, like if you notice, his seems more live and mine seems more choppy. We try to fix it. This is the best we could do. So you're gonna have to deal with it, I guess. But uh, yeah, we got on a fucking losing streak. We ended it yesterday. But before yesterday, we got a fucking no-hitter pitched at us, dude, yeah. which is fucking embarrassing. Especially when you look at our lineup, you're like, one of these guys got to get a fucking hit. Cody Bellinger, Mookie Betts, those I, two alone should have a, two hits a game. It's like when uh, they say you got to hit rock bottom before you can start moving up. That was like rock bottom for us. Dude. That's what we finally no won. Hit. We, what's embarrassing, though, is we came into this year like, I think we even started episode one. Saying something on the lines of like, we should not be fucking losing. We are yeah. a super team. Got a murderer's row of batters. Dude, we are a super team. We are the last team that should have gotten no hitter. That's embarrassing, dude. Yeah, it is. It's frustrating. Um, shout outs to the Chicago Cubs, though. They fucking, they fucking smoked us 4 0 through a no hitter. You can't really. Good you for, gotta tip your good hat for off. Good for Jock. Man. Good for Jock, yeah. You, you gotta tip your hat, hats off. Um, I know this is a little off subject, but uh, did you see how when they gave him his world champion ring, they also gave one to his brother, Champ Peterson? I didn't. That's yeah. cool. The Dodgers actually asked for him to come on the field, too, and his brother came out there, and they presented him with his own um, World Series ring. That's so badass, Yeah, I thought dude. that was really cool. That is hella cool. Good yeah. for them. But we, we had shout-outs to them, uh, Craig Kimbrell. As soon as I found out that K- Craig Kimbrell was going to close the game, he was like getting warmed up in the ninth. I was like, yeah, we're getting a no-hitter. He got fucking fat. He did. He got really. He got really big. But he. I think. I don't know what. What What's good? But that extra weight, I guess, is working for him. Because probably was with the velocity. Fucking, yeah, he Putting was his weight into it. He. He. I remember. I was, so. I got a new TV. You guys don't see it, obviously, but I got a new TV. It's fucking gigantic. It pr- pretty much takes up my whole TV, and I love this fucking TV so much. It inspires me to want to watch more shit on it. So I always have something on it. I watch the Dodgers play every night now. So, like, it's become, like, my new tradition to throw the Dodger game on, um, which I think is the coolest thing. Thanks for, thanks for the TV again. Yeah, I was putting Fuck it up, dope. and I fucked up your game. I unplugged your power on accident. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, shit. No, it didn't really matter. Um, but, yeah, it's fucking badass. And then I uh, turn the Dodger game on or whatever sports game's on. That's going to be fucking cool when football season comes. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I watch the Dodgers play every night, and, dude, like, it's fucking embarrassing. Like, like I was – the fact that I was watching to be, like, not, like – we're going to rally and win the game, but to be like, I'm going to watch because I want to not get a no-hitter. Like, I'm going to watch to at least get one hit. Yeah. That's what I was cheering for. That's how you know we're fucking rock bottom, when I'm like, get a hit, get a hit, get a hit. Not like, let's win the game. Yeah. I was praying for them to get one fucking hit. just didn't hit. want them to have the no-hitter. I didn't want yeah. them to have the no-hitter, and they fucking did. And I knew, I, I, don't, I don't know why I thought we were fine. It's fucking Craig Kimbrell. The guy's one of the best fucking... Closers in baseball ever. I haven't heard from that fool in a minute until you brought him up. I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that fucking Yeah, game. Scarecrow. Um, I call him Scarecrow because he does like that arm thing and he kind of looks That's like That's cool. Scarecrow. I like that. Um, but, yeah, I, I didn't – he's, I think, the ninth in the all-time list for like saves or something. All-time. Some shit like that where it's just like, damn. All-time? Really? All-time ninth. Yep, damn. Craig Kimbrell. Um, I think Jansen's somewhere on there. I don't know if he is, though. 
Probably. I know he's like fucking top for us ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. There's a lag on your video. I don't know if it matters. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I pointed that out. Um, it's just going to be like that. We have to deal with it. Oh. I thought um, you were talking about the little staticky shit that we covered. <laughs> oh, no, 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 Yeah, so it's the fucking frame rate. We call that frame rate. Your frame rate's at, like, 60 right now, and mine's probably at, like, 30. Wow. So that's why it's choppy. But, um, yeah, fucking Dodgers blow. And speaking of TV, um, so this is us. We literally checked our phones. And we were like, oh, fuck, it's Saturday. It's filming day. We did not prepare for this. Yeah. This week went by quick as shit. Yeah, dude. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Like this week went by super quick. So we didn't. We usually we have like a decent idea of what we're gonna talk about. This this week though, I was like, I'm gonna take a shower and then I'm only gonna think about what we could talk about. And so I was thinking about all the shit that we said we were gonna maybe talk about or touch up on that we never have. And one topic that we haven't touched on is pop pop culture movies. Pop culture movies. Pop right. culture <laughs> movies. I I we are. What do they call that? Cinephiles? Fuck, I've never heard that word there before. There's something, um, it's pretty much what you call people who really fucking love movies. That's what we are. We fucking really, we grew up on movies, movies was our shit. Yeah. Um, we are the type of people that you don't want to go see movies with to have fun. Yeah. Because if it's a terrible fucking movie, we're going to tell you. Yeah. We're not going to go there and be like, oh, that was a good deal. Oh. We're going to be like, yo, that shit was ass. So, to add to that, me and your sisters and your brothers went to go see Fast 9 and your mom. Mm -hmm. And the movie goes on, and I, Lizzie's sitting next to me, and I pull over, and I give her the whole breakdown that this was going to happen. And she was like, okay, yeah. And that's exactly what happened. No, yeah. you predicted it. <laughs> so, anyways, we're going to jump on that. We love fucking movies. We know when a movie is horribly written. We know when it's perfectly written. That's why, so... A lot of people, when The Last of Us 2 came out, so The Last of Us 2, uh, or The Last of Us, for people who don't know, is a video game, one of the more famous video games ever made. It's one of the, it's a game that you play where you're playing a movie. Yeah. It's fucking dope. And it's one of my favorite games of all time. Um, I, the, guy who, who, the guy who voice acts the main character, I, I got a signed poster of his. It's one of my fucking prized possessions. One of my favorite voice actors ever. I got another one from also one of my favorite voice actors. Prize possessions right there. Nolan North, Troy Baker, shout outs. Um, but um, it's like a fucking movie. And the first one was one of the greatest gaming experiences I've ever had in my fucking life. <laughs> Cried, laughed, smiled. Like, it's 12 hours of, like, perfect video game. That's awesome. And then they came out with the second one, and it fucking sucked. And it was the most disappointing thing ever. And you could tell... The real from the fake. The people who knew what a, a, a good written thing was and somebody who didn't. By the fact that if you enjoyed that game or not. Because that game was the most horribly written video game I've ever played in my fucking life. The worst game I've ever played ever. Do you, do you think though that um, because of your love of the video games and how high of a standard that first one put out there, mm -hmm. that maybe it's not as bad as it was because of the high standard from the first one? Yeah, so I, I definitely took that into consideration, a consideration. I was fucking pissed when I finished playing. And I was like, because it's a t the first game's twelve hours. Yeah. The second game's twenty four. Damn. Um, and if you remember when we got that game, I was in the living room with my dog. I played it every, every day, until I finished it. For I think I completed it in like two to three days. Yeah. I was just down there playing it. Um. I, I I took that into consideration. Like maybe I'm just being harsh. You know, maybe I put a high standard out there. But I I read up on like different people's perspectives, you know, people who thought it was fucking amazing, and I just re... kind of just looked back on it, and I was like, nah. It's just, there's so many fucking plot holes and so much shit that doesn't make any sense, where you're just like, why? what the fuck? That character would never do that. Yeah. So for an example, one of the main characters, her name's Ellie. She's a fucking badass. In the first game, she fucking kills anything that she sees. Like, she's like a fucking... She's like a teenager in the first game, she's a fucking badass. And, like, they make her up to be, like, this fucking dope, like, fucking female lead, like, fucking dope badass. And you, everybody fucking cheers her on because she's fucking dope. She just kill, she, She's probably killed, like, fucking hundreds of people. In the second game, they have, they have a point where she kills one fucking person in an act of vengeance. I won't spoil it, but there's a, she's trying to get vengeance for somebody. And she kills one of the people who was involved. And then she goes back to the theater with her girl, girlfriend and she's, like, fucking depressed about it. Even, and, and like, you look at that, you're like, okay, what's wrong with that? 
Well, the ro- problem is that's the fucking thirteenth th- fucking thousandth person she's fucking killed. Why the fuck is she but her? Yeah, and it was so a bad like, guy. It was somebody that actually killed somebody that she was yeah. like that she loved, like so like a fucking her best friend. So like it's like shit like that. Like there's a lot of moments like that where you're like, dude, that doesn't make any fucking sense. So like she fucking you you play as her, you kill like three hundred people, and then she kills one person who was involved in the murder of like her fucking father figure or whatever the fuck you know and then she fucking is like all depressed about it you're like dude you just killed 400 fucking people Mm -hmm. you know it's like what the fuck are you on about and then like they make her to be like this fucking pussy and you're like dude that's not that character that's not the character we know and love from the first game like she was a fucking badass like she was fucking dope and in the first game she has a moment where she kills somebody and she realizes like fuck you know she brutally kills somebody and then she has that moment where she's scarred and then like that's like the turning point in that game where she's like where you, like, learn about her character, like, she's never going to be the same again. Yeah. You know, and so she has, like, that training point. And then she has one in the second game when she's an adult, probably having killed fucking 10,000 people, and then you're just like, why the fuck? That doesn't make any sense. She's been killing people since she was 15. She's a survivor. It doesn't make any fucking sense. So there's a lot of moments like that. Anyways, so that's not the point I was going to make. I could complain about how fucking dog shit that <laughs> game is. Dude, I swear to God, I could go on for 13 hours about how fucking terrible that game was. Um, so... When we watch something that is horribly written, we are on that shit. We are not afraid to say it. And then we also tip our hats off to people who fucking impress us. You know, for yeah. me, it's Jordan Peele. When I watch, I've never seen anything that like what Jordan Peele's done. So that's why when he comes out with movies, I get excited about it to watch it because I'm like, he's going to come up with something different that we've never seen before. Because a lot of people in this generation, like these um, directors and writers, like they, they come up with like kind of the same shit yeah, sometimes. Yeah, re- recycle it. They recycle a lot. And Jordan Peele, that's why I get excited for Jordan Peele, because he's like, he, he's a great fucking writer. He hasn't missed for me personally. I know he's missed for a lot of people. Like, some people didn't like, uh, some people didn't like Get Out. But for me, he hasn't fucking missed with either. Like, he's just, hit, I, I don't know, I, I really enjoy Jordan Peele. And then with you, you are the, I'm bad when it comes to that, but you're fucking terrible when it comes to that. Because you are so intelligent when it comes to writing that the only way you can be impressed is if you cannot predict the movie. And you predict anything that you watch. And you just yeah. said it right now. Yeah. So my question to you, what is the most recent memory of a movie that actually impressed you? Where you were like, wow. Oh, man. I don't, fuck. I don't know. What was that one movie? Not, this is not what I'm talking about. But what was that one movie where uh, you guys were hoping I wasn't going to predict it? And then I said it and you were all pissed off in the back. What, what were we watching? We were watching something. And in the living room, and you guys were excited for me to watch it. And then I said, oh, it's going to be da-da-da-da. And you had already known. I were... wa- It was WandaVision, right? Was it WandaVision? Because you said something about, like, uh... And you were like, and then after the episode, you were like, damn it. Like, I was so pissed. I thought we finally got you on something you would yeah. not have thought. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember what it was, but, um... It was WandaVision, movie? yeah. A movie that impressed you. Where you watched it, you were like, maybe you could you predicted it. But just writing wise, story wise, you you were impressed. You're like, I've never seen anything like that. That was kind of fucking cool. Like I I, I talked to you guys about this movie, and uh, it's not a very well known movie, but it's got big actors in it. Um, Legends of the Fall. It's a long movie, mm-hmm. but um, it's just I I feel like it's so well written, and that movie like you're talking about, it kind of gets you into the. Um, where you, you're like, hell yeah, and then there's points where it makes you sad, and you're just like, fuck, that's crazy, and there's time to make you laugh, and like, I don't know, like, it's a long movie, if you're not into movies that, like, you know me, I'm a huge movie buff, I love movies, that's like my favorite movie thing to buff, do, that's what I was looking for, I just love, that's my thing, I, I, I'll i sit on the couch, have a Dr. Pepper, some Red Vines, maybe some marshmallows, and I will watch movies all fucking day, and I'll be good, like, I just love movies, and uh, so if you're not like that, Legends of Fall can be a little hard because uh, there's a lot of, of character development, so it takes time, you know? So yeah, long, it's very time-consuming. Yeah, so long movies like that, people are like, oh, fuck, you know, they yeah. don't want to watch that shit. They want action right away. But uh, Legends of Fall is a little bit long, but it's a great fucking movie. Is uh, that the one with, who's in it? Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Yeah. What's it about? Uh, three brothers and a father that live on a ranch. And, um, like, it, it's, it's crazy because it's almost like, multiple movies in one so there's a a a whole movie kind of about their brotherhood and growing up there's a part where it's all about a girl Mm -hmm. and then there's a part where they go to war Mm -hmm. 
and they're in like you know fighting over in, in a time where like the World War Two and shit. And then it goes into like a time in prohibition where they're trying to make money on the sides, but they have families, and it's it's just a fucking crazy ass movie. And then the ending, you're just like, fuck yeah, that's dope. You dude. know, you're just like, man, how yeah, dude. I love that. Like that ended the right fucking way, because you could have like a that. great movie, and in the ending, you're like, what the fuck? You it's, ruined yeah. the whole movie. Yeah, but you like could ruin a movie this with one, an ending. because how long it was, you were hoping that it kept on going because you were so bought in. But the way it ends, too, you're just like, yeah, yeah. That's I dope. fucking love that, you know? And uh, one of the characters you were almost almost named after, you were Lizzie, uh, Brad Pitt's character, his name's Tristan in there, and mm. I always liked that name because of that movie. It's one of my all-time favorites. I like movies that a lot of people don't know about, like Legends of the Falls, great movie, one of my fa- all-time favorites, and so is The 13th Warrior. The 13th it's, Warrior I've seen, and I, I haven't seen it since I was a kid, but that's a fucking fire movie. Yeah, it's like one of my fire. favorites, like when the, the head Viking guy... Knows he's gonna die, mm-hmm. but he refuses to like not fight and go out fucking swinging. Yeah, and with his men. Yeah, and like when they're out there about to go against fucking thousands of dudes and there's just like eight of them, and they see and they're like kind of like fuck man this is it we're gonna die, but then they see their leader fucking dying of poison come out dragging his sword like let's fucking go we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> yeah, go out gonna swinging go. he picks it up and he just screams and everybody's like it fucking fires up everybody gives me goosebumps it makes you want to fucking so go dope, go learn how to fucking fight with the sword you know like yeah. it's such a great fucking movie that's why i like i liked uh game of thrones yeah because it uh, like there's one specific scene that i just fucking love and it's i think the battle of the bastards or something yeah and i think that's it i think it's that episode where episode. Jon snow it's like a shot of him and he's just sitting there by himself and he just sees like fucking 100 guys and, it's and you can see in his face too that like, he knows like this is it yeah I'm like go i can't it. win yeah. I'm going to die, but I'm going to take up my sword and I'm going to go out swinging. Because I think before that scene, his fu- they killed his brother. Yeah. Um, they, like, the guy, um, what's his name? Fuck. Ramsey Bolton. Bolton. He, he like, throws his brother out and his, he makes, like, Jon Snow's brother run. To like, him. Like, go, go to him. And then he just fucking nails him with an arrow. And yeah. And Jon Snow just has to fucking watch it. And then it just comes up. And it's such a badass sequence where he just kind of comes up and it's just a shot from, like, his backside. And he's just what, like sitting there like this, like just waiting, like watching an entire fucking army come after him. And it's just a shot of him like pulling his sword out and just sitting there waiting for them to come. And he just yeah. starts fucking. Ripping I'm not gonna run. Him. Yeah, I'm just gonna. But I know go I'm not it. gonna win yeah. against all these people. But I'm not gonna go out like no bitch. You yeah, know? Like, and he ends up fucking, winning. <laughs> he yeah. ends up surviving, and you're just like fucking dope. That's why I feel like you need to watch that show Vikings because there's like so many fucking. Yeah, I scenes. need to. Yeah, I need and to. And Vikings is based on actual people that lived in our time you yeah. know Ragnar Lothbrok is a real person Braun Ironside all those guys are legit dudes and it's based on so there's pieces of truth and fiction into the story mm-hmm. into the, the show but just the fact that know that there was these real badass badasses like that are, are fucking crazy but as far as movies that like shock me I'd really have to think about it. I don't think I'd go off the top of my head where I'd be like damn you know yeah um okay so not to kind of so yeah, the reason why I want to watch Vikings is because I'm a sucker for action sequences. Oh man, the greatest just fighting is just fucking like, especially greatest. when it's like in that time, because I think gunfights in movies average, but a what? fucking dope sword fight, you're just like fucking, fucking face fire. to face. Yeah, yeah. Um, so and I'm I gonna want to watch that. What makes a good show is if you could like a character, and then another season later you fucking hate that character. Mm-hmm. And a few scenes later, you're like, I fucking love that same character again. That's great storytelling. If they can make you love him, hate him, and then love him again, and there's people on that show, you're like, fuck yeah, he's one of my favorites. And then two seasons down, you're like, I can't stand that motherfucker. I can't believe he did that. And then he like, <laughs> like on a Dumb and Dumber, and then totally redeem yourself, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I think that's great storytelling, you know, when you could hate someone and then love them again. And why that's great storytelling? Because humans aren't one-sided. Yeah. You know, I think that when you write a story where you could, like, where, like, characters aren't just one-dimensional. Because you see a lot of movies like that where it's, like, a character and he's, like, the baby face and he just stays baby face. You're like, no, dude, humans are, like, complicated. Like, people, like, yeah. humans make mistakes, humans do shit, dumb shit, you know. You factor in all the things, greed and all that stuff. It comes into the human mind a lot, you yeah. know, so... So yeah, what I was going to say is I love fucking action sequences. So I loved fucking Game of Thrones for just the fucking fight scenes. And then I want to watch Vikings for that same reason because I heard they have a lot of that. So we're going to rewatch that whole series with Lizzie. So you should watch it with us. I'll try to watch a few and then I'll just, whenever you guys stop watching, I'll watch it while you, in between or whatever. Just so, that, so we can so finish it. So that's a no. It. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, cause I want to catch up. Are they are they still going on with that, or did they? The show? show's over. Oh, it's over. Um, did they did it have a good ending? Uh, so like the last season. Did you get closure? Uh, yeah, you did. It's just it's also where those things like I said, it's based on real people. So you're kind of like, I wish it didn't end like that because people you loved are gone. Mm-hmm. But it's the truth. That's how it fucking happened. You know yeah. what I mean? So, in that aspect, you're just like, ah, but it's still dope. Yeah. So, anyways, Vikings. I want to do that. And then I love Daredevil for that same reason. They have one shot action sequences where you just it's just one take and it's just him just fucking everybody up and you're just like that's fucking fire. So I love Daredevil for that same reason. To kind of change the subject a little bit, staying on movies though. What's your favorite? Um. Not genre, but theme um, of movie. You know, you have like the cowboy like theme. Where you see I, I a lot like of movies warrior in- themes. So like um, medieval. Like in sword. general, um, warrior because uh, I don't. I think I'm thinking you're being more specific and I'm being more vague because I'm saying like I love the 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 last samurai. Mm-hmm. You know, but I also like I like Vikings. Um, so I like where there's like that epic hero. Old school fucking fighting war so shit, like, you know? Besides horror, obviously. But like, like sword, like anything that just has to do with like... Yeah, I think because like what you're saying, like when it's guns, it's different. But like when it's fucking face-to-face combat, like that shit's dope. Because you're like, it's my will against your will and that's it. And the difference, like I feel like we became this like, not to get fucking real here, but like I'm, I'm gonna, I mean, so sorry. <laughs> Um, humanity has become fucking pussies yeah. as we've gotten. A, I always say, and especially soft now. we got fucking, we became fucking pussies and like in war and everything. Um, like I'm going to be honest, like, yeah, there's a, when you're at war, it's different, but like in a fucking gun, like fighting, like a gunfight sequence between like two characters in a movie, it's just like, they just have to pull a trigger and aim the gun. Yeah. You know, if they know how to do that right then. But when it comes to like the sword fighting shit. It's like, yo, we're going to both get sliced up. It's who has the fucking determination to win this fight, who has the skill to win this fucking fight. You know? Yeah. Like, if there's just the more. Heart. You could shoot uh, somebody once and they're fucking dead. But, but like, they could be fighting, way better people than you, but that one bullet will take it. You yeah. Know? and But when it comes to sword fighting, these dudes could get fucking stabbed a hundred times, but if they have the fucking will, they're just like, fucking, I'm not going down. You yeah. know, you got to fucking decapitate me first, pussy boy. You know? Yeah. So, like, in that sense, like, they give me goosebumps and they they pump you up. Yeah. They make you want to fucking, I don't know, live in that time. The, only time, the that only time guns had that kind of aspect was in, like, the Wild Wild West. Yeah. When they had, like, the fucking, what, what do they call that? The standoffs? Yeah. Where they would just sit there and then at the Showdown. same time they just, you know, like, fucking, what's that fool's name from Tombstone? Oh, Doc Holliday and Doc Wider. Holliday, yeah. See, like I like watching those movies where like they do the standouts and you just fucking gun somebody with the flu or some shit. Still faster than that. We started a game for blood, remember? <laughs> yeah, and that so fool dope. pushed out and he was like, I was just fooling. <laughs> he said, Well I wasn't <laughs> <laughs> See like that was like the only time. I like it when fight sequences have like That's why I love the UFC for that yeah. same reason. It's like the battle like you said, the battle of will and might, like who has it? You both yeah. trained for three months. You both been training for a long time. You know, similar. They try to keep them with similar records and and, and streaks. So it's like, who's gonna fucking give their Who all? That's the will and determination to leave it on the. It's funny we were even talking about this because just before we were setting up, I was watching a clip on my phone, and it's like the anniversary of the Czech Congo against Pat Berry fight, mm-hmm. where Berry's knocking him the fuck out, and like they're like, oh, I can't believe they're not stopping it. Czech Congo is out on his feet. He like drops him three times. And then he gets up and gets that fucking crazy right shot and knocks Barry out cold. Yeah. And we're like, what the fuck yep. just happened? It was the battle of the wheels. Yeah. Like, Czech just was not going to fucking stop. He kept on grabbing a leg. He did not just fucking lay there and say, okay, let him stop it. I'm fucking dizzy as fuck. He kept on, kept on, finally got up, got enough distance. And when Barry came in, he threw that fucking right and dropped yeah, him. Yeah, and it reminds me of also that fight, too, where it's like um, Yair Rodriguez versus, I think, Korean Zombie? Maybe? I don't know. It was some uh, Japanese fighter, I think. And they were fighting it, and they were both fucked up. Like, you could see it on the... They were, like, just fucking blood, Hank, like, they just fucking bruises. They're all fucked up. And then, like, in the ti- the final 10 seconds of the fight, Yair, like, did, like, this 
like uh oh like that spinning spinning back up, elbow that, like uppercut elbow shit yeah yeah and then knocked him out fucking cold and he's just sitting there like fuck yeah like on his knees and shit all tired and shit it's like know? when uh robbie lawler and rory mcdonald and they're both just fucking drenched and swollen and at the end of the round like even McCarthy had to be like, go to your corners. I just fucking stood there. And they're like, I'm not backing down. Yeah, dude. And just fucking... He, the even coolest fucking, imagery. Uh, Lawler was like, I'm just fucking just seeing blood. Just fucking everywhere. Dude. Dude, that shit was the dope. The coolest fucking imagery in sports history. Yeah. Like, and then he just... And then they get in each other's face all fucking bloodied up. You're yeah. just like, fuck yeah. So I've always dope. loved Robbie Lawler. Yeah. And then that's a, a clear-cut case of someone's will finally breaking. Yeah. Because Rory was going punch for punch with them. Great fucking fight. And then the punch that drops him was a jab. It was a, it was a punch that, like, everybody was like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. And he just barely hit him, and then he fucking just kind of collapsed. It was like, that's it. And I guess they said that that punch uh, broke his orbital bone, the, the, mm. the bone that holds your eye in. So I can imagine that being pretty fucking painful. But, like... Dude, you're beat to shit. Fucking uh, Lawler's lip was sliced in half up to his nose and was just flapping. Mm-hmm. Like, and then, boom, he's like, I just, I can't take the pain no more. Yeah. And he fucking stopped. So cool, dude. Yeah, those um, are fucking crazy scenes, man. So. Did you see Korean Zombie called out Mac Holloway? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Was, Mac Holloway was would fuck him up. Yeah, I'm sorry. Him up. Um, he's the people's champ. He won that fight with Volkanovski. Um. But uh, what what else was I going to talk about? So yeah, so let's stay on the topic of movies because I want to talk about movies more. Um, the name a movie that was the closest thing to perfect for you. Man, closest to perfect. Yeah. So I guess it would be like your favorite movie. I guess. Kind of. Probably Legend of the Fall. Legend of the Fall, close yeah. to a perfect movie. So, like, closest to sequels would probably be, like, the newest Halloween. Dude. Because it paid so much homage to... Like, they made it clear that they're going to do their own, like, timeline. They're mm-hmm. four and five. We're not going to matter no more. Even six and H2O and Resurrection. Like, those had nothing to do with it. But I loved how they still paid homage in very particular scenes to every one of those movies. Yep. Like, even when the daughter at the Halloween party was wearing the schoolgirl outfit... That was the same outfit from, I think, Halloween H2O that one of the daughters wore. Yeah. In, or one of the characters wore. So, like, even though they were going off of that, they still made sure they paid respects to those movies. Yeah. And then the music was on point. Like, everything. I walked in there, and I was just, I had goosebumps. You know me. Michael Myers is my favorite of all time. Yeah, me too. So, I was a little worried that they were going to fuck it up. I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. And I, I was like, man, you know, because I've seen so many remakes, and I've seen so many people try and just fuck everything up. You know, I'm I'm not a fan of the Rob Zombie ones. I know people like it, but like I just thought they were stupid. Yeah, I um, so they had like the Rob Zombie one. He had a whole scene in a strip club, and he just I guess to show titties. I don't know, and he's like killing strippers and shit, and they're like that had nothing to do with the fucking movie. Like, why was that <laughs> why in the there? the fuck would Michael Myers go to a strip club and just kill strippers? Like, it, I thought it was fucking stupid. Yeah, you know? that makes sense. Yeah. So, anyways, I was I was kind of worried, mm-hmm. and then. Uh, uh, like with Jordan Peele, he's uh, he's known for being a comedian. So when I heard Danny McBride was part of it, I was kind of like, Danny, Danny McBride, McBride. Like, are they yeah. gonna try to make this funny? Yeah. You know, because I love Danny McBride. Don't get me wrong, I I love his acting. He's fucking hilarious. That show Eastbound yeah, and Down yeah, is one of my dude. favorite all time TV he's shows. He's fucking funny, but I appreciated it because afterwards it, I realized he was just he. It was like if I had the chance to have my input on a Halloween movie. That's yeah. what Danny McBride, because I didn't know he was a huge Michael Myers fan like I am. Yeah. So to have someone, like a true fan of the of the fucking genre and the movie, go in there, like, I walked out of that movie thinking, that was dope. Like, Fuck that's yeah. fucking cool. Yeah, you know? so that, that counts, per, cl- movie close to perfect, because I think that movie is close to perfect. Yeah. Movie. Like, that movie... God, it was such a... Com- yeah, it was such a combination of all Halloweens. Mm-hmm. In a way, it had a lot of... It paid a lot of homage and even had like some rob zombie edge to it where the kills were just fucking brutal yeah like that sequence where like i knew i was in for a a treat when that bathroom sequence happened where he drops the teeth on her oh yeah the stall and then she's like screaming he's like pulling on her leg and the dude comes in he just fucking brutalizes him and he's slamming his head against the wall you like hear his bones breaking in his fucking skull he's just fucking he's like looking at her like fucking run bitch i'm taking (laughs) an ass beating for you (laughs) you're just like holy fuck dude like after that like my i was like not scarred but i had that feeling of like holy fuck i'm gonna be in for a treat i think i had that feeling at the very beginning where they're at the sane asylum and he shows Michael the mask. 
Where you're like, and the music oh, build up and the fucking the peop the crazy people around them and their little squares are starting to go off and like scream and laugh and you're just like and you kinda get that build up, you're like, Oh shit. Fuck. Like they're yeah. building me up already at the beginning, yeah. you know. Uh, I didn't like the whole uh new Loomis character, the guy that was playing that took over for Michael after Doctor Loomis died, yeah. like and how he was like trying to like be that, a bad guy too. Yeah. Like I thought that was kinda dumb. That was pretty fucking yeah. It I was, think that was the only weak part of that movie. The only weak yeah, for sure. The um, only weak part. Everything else I fucking loved. The even from the lighting. Uh-huh. The way they had certain scenes where it was dark and you can't really see anything, but you see a shadow and you kind of go into that whole why they call him the shape. Because yeah. that's all you would see and you're like, it's a really dark scene. Like normally they want to make sure you see everything, but it was done very well. Yeah. And then like in the backyard, I'm sorry, I'm getting all excited now because no, Michael Myers. No, let's, go, let's talk about Michael, dude. <laughs> um, and uh, the, the motion sensor light yeah. kicks on and all of a sudden you just see him and he's like, hey man, like what the fuck? You know, like the fat guy. Yeah, dude, that the was so dope. Coolest sequence in the movie. Coolest yeah. sequence in the movie. Because it's real. It's not like just a random light turn off, turning on. It's a fucking motion sensor light. So and it made it real. Yeah. It, what it was though, what made that scene so much fucking cooler was you could tell the screenwriters were fucking with us in that moment. Because mm-hmm. the lights go on. He's like, "Hey, uh, Mr. So and So, Mr. Robinson, or whatever the fuck his name. Hey, Mr. <laughs> Robinson." Uh, just kept stopping through, you know. And I really the, like a girl, and she just, I'm sorry, man, I'm drunk. You know, <laughs> the lights go off, and they come back on, he's closer, and he's like, whoa, what the fuck? Yeah. And then you're just like, oh, they're not going to do this to us. Lights go off again, you're like, don't, okay, just end it here, dude. Lights you're go like, back on, in, he's the, closer. in your head, you're like, fucking run, dude. dude <laughs> you know? And then it goes off, and then it comes back again. Or it goes off, but it stays longer. And it goes on, you just, and you're like, oh! Yeah, know, that was dope. But yeah, that sequence where he fucking kills him in the bathroom cell. Don't know if they. We still don't know if he killed him or not, because the final shot was him like all fucking bloodied up against the wall. Like mm. <laughs> he was still breathing by the time the sequence ends. So I don't know if he was fucking dead or not. That bitch was dead though. Yeah, she got fucking him. choked out. I think uh, when they show the cops investigating thing, I think they said he was dead. Cause they, I think they say something like, "We got two bodies or three bodies, one in the shop and two in the restaurant, or something like that." Yeah, something like that. Maybe, but it, yeah. it was an awesome, great scene too, where it shows him go into their car, open the trunk, and slowly mm-hmm. put the mask on. That part was like, so, gave me chills. Yeah, so for sure. fucking, so fucking cool. And to go to the Loomis thing. Um. Oh, not to the, go to the Loomis thing. I remember what I was afraid of going into that movie. And it was one thing, and it's very, it's one thing very, very specific. I did not want to see what Michael looked like under the mask. Yeah. So that's all I was telling. I think I remember even telling you before the movie, I was like, I don't care how perfect it is. If they show what he looks like, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to like it. Yeah. They cannot show what Michael Myers looks like. Because what makes him fucking Michael Myers, what makes him so fucking terrifying, is his emotionless face and the fact that you, like, he, he, like his identity is almost a mask. Mm-hmm. And you really don't know what he looks like under it. Yeah. You know, so I was like, if they keep that fucking, like, that, like, that ominous, like, we don't, like, his, who he is, is the fucking mask, like, he's fucking Michael Myers, like, don't show me what he looks like. And yeah. that's what, another thing in the Rob Zombie movies that I thought fucking blew, was that fucking, um, where he takes off the mask, and he looks like fucking, uh, Robin Williams when he comes out of fucking Jumanji, and he's all fucking hairy and shit, and you're yeah. just like... And then he says something like, die, bitch. And then he fucking kills that dude. I'm like, this fucking sucks, dick, Rob Zombie. I don't know why yeah. you thought this would stick be Stick to music, bro. Yeah, hey. stick to music, dickhead. I, the only thing I thought was cool was, the only thing I thought was cool with Rob Zombie was the edgy kills. Yeah. And the, how fucking big Michael was. Yeah, he made him a fucking monstrous he made him, dude. Yeah, he made him fucking monstrous. He made him scary. Yeah. With the mask on. But when he took him off, he, it, it ruined the whole. Yeah. Like, uh, ominous, like... What I also liked about this movie, too, is attention to detail. Like, yes. in the very first movie, when uh, she stabbed him with a sewing needle in the neck, they made sure there was a hole in the mm-hmm. mask now to pay... So that you lo- you don't know that unless you're a true fan to pay attention to. They don't make it a, a point yep. to say, hey, look, there's a hole in the side. Yep. But the true fan seen it, and they're like, fuck, that's crazy attention to detail mm-hmm. that they made sure there was a hole in the side from the first movie. And to also add to your point, too, I think another thing I was worried about uh, before we got the trailer to the, the Halloween, the sequel, um, was I was worried they were going to fuck the mask up because every movie, every single ho- uh, Halloween sequel, the mask looked different, and it, it, and it just fucking sucked. Every yeah. single one. And he's, every single mask that wasn't in the original fucking sucked. So in the second movie, I was like, 
just make the fucking mask look cool. And then they yeah. made it all like rigid and old and it was just looked so fucking like badass. Like if time took it, you know, yep. like, it was like what it does to regular plastic. Yeah. Yep, it was so fucking cool. Like the mask was one of my favorite things about that movie. Yeah, for sure. Um, the trailer was pretty fucking dope for the next one, man. Dude, holy shit. I, I, you sent it to me and I was like, oh my God, tell me this is not a fan made trailer. And then I watched it and I was like, oh, this yeah. is going to be fucking fire. Because um, it, it, it gives out too, because you're like, how the fuck did he get out? Yeah. And then it shows, like, and it's, like, realistic shit. Mm-hmm. And the guy's, like, trying to get to his buddy, like, hey, give me your hand. And, and then Michael like, pulls him down. Boom, and yeah. grabs him. And then it's it shows like, the sequence of him fucking killing a bunch of firemen. And you're just like, I cannot wait to see that scene. And even it's the look on the firefighters, and they're like, and he's, like, walking out of the house. They're like, oh, shit, Dude, you know? he just comes out. They're like, what the fuck? And then one of them brings out, like, a buzz saw. And you're just like, oh, this is not going to end good. And then fucking, of course, as expected, Michael fucking turns it on. I'm just, ah! you're just like, oh, fuck, man. It's Michael, run, dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, hey, yo, I mean, I know we have a code. We're firemen, but good luck with him. I'm out. Maybe you even hit him with the fucking water hose. Yeah, and then I also like the the, uh, the sequence in that uh, trailer where it shows the perspective of the fireman inside the mask. Yeah, and you hear and the, then you just see, you just hear, And then you know, just blood splatters on his mask. You're like, oh, Fuck, I cannot wait to see that scene. Yeah. That scene is going to be fucking dope. And what's nuts is there's still another movie after this one. Yes. That's so cool. And I what I think, what it. I'm excited about too is um, I just want to see where Michael's number at, it, number is at as far as kills go. Because it yeah. seems like in this next movie he's going to kill a bunch of fucking people. <laughs> and like, uh, it, oh, it, like I just, as fucked up as that sounds, as sadistic as that sounds, I just want to see Michael Myers kill like a hundred fucking people. You know? Yeah, but I think part of the fact that uh, I think his kills are more uh, meaningful. They're not just random people. Like yeah, and that's yeah, and that's what you know. attention to detail. He goes and kills a bunch of babysitters. So you're like, okay, so now they're keeping like the same like ominous. Why the fuck is he killing babysitters? Babysitters thing like in the original. Yeah. He goes into the second movie. He he fucking kills the two people who were fucking with him with the mask. So th- they had it coming. Um, the the reporters they had that shit coming. They were taunting him. And he Michael, had to get the mask. Michael, yeah, he had to get the mask. He could have yeah. very easily taken the mask and just hijacked the car, but instead he was just like, now fuck these two, they're assholes. You thought you were fucking slick talking yeah. shit. Got his jumpsuit, fucking destroyed the two reporters, and then bounced. Those made sense. And then he goes and kills a bunch of babysitters. You're like, okay, we knew that. He fucking doesn't like babysitters. Well, we, we have yet to find out why. Um, and then th- there was a scene in the preview where it said, all the kills are leading back to his childhood home, so I think they're gonna get more into the story of like why, why Michael he, does yeah, what he why does. Was, yeah, and I'm I hope, and that's my only worry with the sequel is like, it better not be a fucking dumbass reason. Yeah, like it better make sense where I'm like, oh, okay, okay, that that makes sense. Yeah. Um. Or something where like where we say I don't predict, and it's like, man, I never thought of that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. And then there, what else happened in that sequel? Um, or like they're gonna pay a lot more homage in this in that sequel because it shows her in the hospital. I'm sure they're gonna go with something there. What is one Michael Myers kill that's happened in the sequel that you hope they recreate in the in the next movies? I just like where uh, the original one where he killed Homeboy in the cl- in the kitchen and he stabs him on the wall like, and his oh, body's up like, and he, that's when you get the original head turn. He looks at me just like. Yeah, like he's so cool. Marveled by this guy's death, like he's intrigued by it. You yeah, know? very he weird. Made and him more fucked up. Yeah, yeah. Because they don't say that in the movie. Like, oh, he just like <laughs> admires his work, but you see it, and you're yeah. just like, oh, this guy's fucked up. Yeah. You know, uh, mine. It's kind of it's very random, but it happened in H two H two O. There, it's the final fight sequence, and like her boyfriend, Jamie Lee's uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's boyfriend in the movie. He's like, hey, uh, Lori, you know, whatever. And then he just fucking just gets, like, levitated, and it's just Michael holding him up by the fucking one blade. Yeah. I, I hope they do something with that. Yeah, Because that, cool. that sequence was cool because you're just like, okay, they're just really showing how fucking strong Michael Dude, I'm so fucking pissed because I've been on this weird fucking kick where I just want to watch Halloween movies, and I seen the original one the other day, and I'm like, I want to watch part two. I want to watch the hospital one. And I'm, like, pissed. I know I have all the DVDs. I can't fucking find them. Yeah, I can't fucking find any of them, and I'm pissed because I know I own them. Mm-hmm. I just don't know where the fuck they are, and then on every fucking show thing they want me to pay for it. I'm like, I'm not gonna pay for it when I already know where I have it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm fucking pissed. I want to watch it, and honestly, 
Everybody talks about the Rob Zombie ones. I want to rewatch those ones and try and watch it with an open mind. An open mind. Yeah. And because I only seen them once, and I was like, I fucking hate them. They're fucking stupid. And maybe you know, I don't know, because there are some people that really like them. Mm. But I think they're just Rob Zombie fans, and there's those people that are fucking into that stupid shit, like a House of a Thousand Corpses or whatever the fuck. That I thought that shit was stupid. Yeah. I thought I don't like any of Rob Zombie's movies. I just think that they're over the top and they're they're just gory. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. There's nothing else. That's the only thing he's good at. You know, and it's like, okay, that's fine and dandy, but to make a good movie, there's more to just the gore. There's just the story, the you know. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. I don't know. I wanted to watch them, though, just because I've been on a weird fix and wanted to watch them. Yeah, the only movie. thing I thought was cool with Rob Zombie was, like, his different approach to making Michael Myers bigger. And yeah. That I thought was kind of cool, I guess, because he just looks looked meaner. Because what makes M- Michael Myers also so scary is he's, like, kind of built like an, or- like an ordinary guy. Yeah, he's like five foot nine. I, it looks like I don't know how tall Frank Castle is, but I think he's he's not he's like not fucking six foot eight. He look, I, I would have thought he was like six foot six one maybe. Little yeah, something like that. So he's like it, it's not like fucking. He's not all yoked and like huge. Yeah, yeah he's, he's just, just kind a, of a normal guy. Yeah, and just then he just goes up. and fucking kills everything, and you're yeah. just like that makes him scarier. But I, I liked his take on making him just fucking huge. Make it because if it was I different. saw if I saw the Rob Zombie Michael Myers. I'd be like, yo, I don't give a fuck if this guy's pranking me. Get me out of this bitch. Yeah. You know? Like when you seen Pinhead that one Halloween? Yes. <laughs> Full I'm fucking sorry. sprit. <laughs> we're, we're not going to tell that story. We're saving it for a Halloween episode. <laughs> because that fucking story. I think that was the most... I think that was the first time I've ever been scarred. Yeah. You were fucking gone. Dude. Full sprint. I don't think uh. I ran faster in my life. Anyways. <laughs> I if see, I saw... My fat ass <laughs> Catch you. <laughs> So if I saw Michael Myers like in the sequel and in the original, I think somebody's fucking with me and I'd be like, man, stop fucking around. But yeah. if I saw the Rob Zombie Michael Myers, I'd be out no matter what. Yeah. Because I'd be like, this guy's fucking huge. Get me out of here. Um, and that's that's also part of Michael Myers' mystique is like a lot of people like in the sequel in the sequel with the fat kid, he does oh hey Mister Robinson and he just comes in there and fucking destroys him and yeah. that's like quite a, he like lure, lures you in. Fucking hooks him on that fence, dude. So fucked up. By his fucking chin. Oof. Dude, the fucking soundtrack in that movie, though. Anyways, yeah. oh, so I wanted to bring it up. And also, another sequence in that trailer that I was fucking stoked for was the, the sequence with uh, Lori's granddaughter's boyfriend. Mm-hmm. That I cannot wait for. It yeah, looked like a cool a action sequence. dickhead in the first one. You're like, yeah. I hope he dies. Yeah, I hope he fucking dies. So it looks like they're going to try to redeem him because he's there with his girlfriend or, or his that girl. The girl, I forgot her name already. And I think that's um, paying. I've seen a scene where it's paying homage to either four or five. About. Yes. Because there's a yeah. part on the staircase where the boyfriend who got caught cheating hits him. Yeah. And he's like, "Tell her go up the stairs." And he's trying to re- reload the shotgun. He's like, "Just fucking go!" And he tries to get the shot off, but Michael catches the gun, so he shoots it into the air. And then he fucking headbutts him, and the guy fucking spits his blood at him. And then he tries to hit Michael with the shotgun, and then he just grabs him by the neck and just fucking. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the first thing I thought about. Yeah, I think they're paying homage to that one. I think my favorite Halloween sequels were like uh, four and five. Four and five. Yeah, me too. Those were fucking like they had. It's like (sighs) for me, it's one, two, four, and five, and everything else after that was kind of like eh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. One hundred percent, I agree. Um, And then yeah, so I want. I was looking for. I was looking forward to that sequence because that's the first thing I thought about was Halloween four and five. Was that? You know, I'm thinking right now. And it's crazy because I just saved this the other day, and then I had no idea you're gonna bring this up and talk about this. And I saved it, and it says Halloween Universe timelines, and it shows the timeline of the movies, and it shows how they break down. And it's like for if you're not a true fan, you should know how each timeline is and which goes to what. And isn't it weird that I just randomly saved that, and we're talking about this right now? Damn, that's fucking crazy. And I just was like, oh, I'm gonna save this and show this to X and Lizzie, and it shows all the the, the timelines. The different timelines, yeah. That's so like that's dope. the. The one we like that goes this way, and then there's the the one we're in now, which is gonna break off this way. But then there's this one, and it goes off to H two and Resurrection, and then Rob Zombies. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. And that's fucking weird that I just randomly saved that. So let's let's do something on record. But first, yeah, I want I was looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that scene, and I'm looking forward to the fireman scene. Because mm-hmm. um, those are going to be fucking cool sequences. I know that boyfriend's going to either die or just fucking... He's going to redeem himself in that sequence. Like, it's uh, that's going to be a cool sequence on the stair... stair- I loved the set. 
for mm-hmm. that sequence because it looked cool. Yeah, it looked like a Michael Myers spot, if that makes any sense. Where you're like, this would be somewhere that Michael Myers would fucking kill somebody. Yeah, for sure. It looked fucking cool. I'm looking forward to that because I want to see how that turns out because I know it's gonna be fucking epic and like fucking ooh, you know, thrilling and shit. Yeah. Um, so let's do it on record. Document it. How many kills do you think he's getting in that movie? The second one coming the out. The second one coming out. Yep. Uh, well, first, technically the third. First yeah. number that popped in my head was fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. The first number that came into my head is 16, but I don't like the number 6. I'm going to go 17. So you said 14? Yeah, I, said 17. I don't know why. That's just yeah. popped in my head, 14. I have I, no, I'm going to go 17. I have no facts behind it. Just as soon as you said that, that number said 14. Yeah, so. I'm going to say yeah, I'm gonna say 17. So let's see. Let's see who's right. There's no, no and there's nothing that's going to, you know, we're not huh. putting anything on it. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And then um, the new Candyman trailer came out. I got mm. to re- watch that still. I haven't seen the new, t- new the new trailer for Candyman. Um, you watched the original Candyman? Um, I think I have, yeah. Because it sounds like they're making this as a part two. Yeah, a, like a remake or something. A uh, sequel. Sequel, like a, what's it called? Uh, what do they call it when they they when they make a sequel to an old movie? They call it something like uh, they. Um, what is it? They they don't re. They they don't remake it. It's they, they, they revamp it. They um, it's when they bring something back. Fuck, I can't remember that word. Yeah, but, when the podcast is over, I'm gonna remember. Yeah. Um. But anyways, yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. Jordan Peele, he's the man. So I hope he makes it cool. Um. And so yeah, I, I'm looking forward to dude Halloween. Okay, so yeah, to the, the Doctor Loomis thing, the Doctor Loomis thing. I thought that sequence sucked. I thought that I was very excited throughout the enti- that entire movie when I was watching it in the theaters with you guys. Yeah. I was really excited. And then when that scene comes on with like Loomis and he puts the mask on and shit, I was like, fuck, here it goes. This is where the movie sucks. Yeah. This was this is what ruins the movie. Yeah, for because real. Because I swear, I swore that he was going to put the mask on and then he was going to be like the new antagonist and that Michael Myers was dead. Yeah. And if that would have happened, I would have been like, I would have went home very angry that night. Yeah. Like that would have ruined my year. I was excited just being in there with you guys because it was something that I grew up loving. Yeah. And, uh, you know, your mom hates scary movies, and she hates that I have you guys watch them. But uh, it's just, like, I don't know. Yeah. I, was, I, was, I felt like, hell yeah, they're watching it with me, you know? Yeah, we watched, um, I watched A Quiet Place with you, I think. Yeah, Lizzie watches all the Stephen King movies with me. Yeah, and then I watched, um. In theaters, I meant though. Like so, in theaters, I watched A Quiet Place with you. I watched It with you. I watched It Two with you, and then we saw Halloween. Mm-hmm. Um, so we gotta we gotta add on to this this catalog of watching horror movies in the theater. Not a lot are coming out, so maybe the Candyman one. Yeah, because most of them fucking suck. Well, we're gonna for sure watch the Halloween one, and yeah. then we'll for sure watch the Candyman one when it comes out. Yeah, for sure. Um, and in that new uh, M Night Shyamalan Shyamalan movie that's coming out with the the old. fucking yeah, that shit looks trippy, dude. It, yeah, it's like an M. Sh- M. Night movie where you're just like, okay, this is where like I hope M. It's Night's a originality hit and comes. not a miss like the village was. Yeah, village I, was a miss, but signs was a fucking hit. I love you know? it's one of my favorite movies ever made. Yeah, um, close to perfect for me. Yeah, one. It's a great me. movie. Yeah, um, and then I'm I'm looking forward to M. Night like because he always has a plot twist. I'm yeah. looking forward to seeing what that one is because the story like it, they in the trailer they touch up on the story. So apparently, from what I gathered, this family goes on an island, right? They're like on like a, like a vacation, and there's a bunch of people there, and then they, uh, they just start aging on this island for mm-hmm. whatever reason. They age advanced, it, like, like highly advanced aging, like quick yeah, as fuck. Yeah, from like ten years old to like eighteen. Yeah, it's like holy fuck. In ten minutes. And so like <laughs> this, these parents, their kids are like they go from kids to like fucking grown people. Yeah. And they're like, what the fuck's going on? And then the kid even sees a dead body where it's all old and fucking fucked up in the water and shit. And so they can't, and from what I'm gathered, they can't escape this island. You know what? Not to change the subject, but it just came in my head. If you like horror movies and you like plot twists, you need to watch The Mist. And I have that on DVD. Stephen King's The Stephen Mist. King, yeah, 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 I gotta watch that. Dude, fucking great horror movie, great movie. But the ending, you're just like, what the I, I did fuck? see, yeah. I, I remember watching it as a kid, 
and I do remember the ending. Fucked up. Yeah. It's it fucked up fuck, ending. Dude. So if fucked anybody up likes ending. that kind of shit, and you just, that's Stephen King to the T right there. Dude. You're just like, because it's I real. fucking can't believe that, you know? But, like, yeah, the father was doing everything to keep his son from the pain, you know? Mm-hmm. It's real. Yeah. It was the most real ending ever because you're like, that's some shit that would happen. Yeah. Um, Imagine how he fucking felt. Like, God damn. Yeah. But, there's yeah, that no movie's going to be pretty dope. There's no way he lived after that movie. Yeah, I don't think he could have. No, yeah. He definitely, like, committed suicide or something after that. Yeah. After that, like, there's something definitely, like, there's no fucking way. Crazy movie. Crazy fucking movie. Yeah. Um, oh, and then um, Fight Club. You should watch that one, too. I haven't seen Fight Club. I, I Do you know, I got spoiled on what the plot twist was in that movie, unfortunately, but I still want to watch it because everybody says it's one of the greatest movies ever made. Yeah, it's a great fucking movie. Um, who, who's a comedy actor right now that you want to see uh, in a serious role? Well, I think uh, Hader did a great job in it. Bill Hader, yeah. I, was I think first he did a name great job in, in it. Like, I think he uh, killed it, actually. Yeah, yeah, no, he killed it. Um, I would love, I would agree with you on that. I would love to see him be serious, though. Because yeah. he was playing Richie, who's funny. Yeah, but there were scenes, though. No, there were scenes where he was and serious. He, and he played it really well, like when he was crying and shit like that. And you're just like, man, he did that. He did a great job. He, no, he fucking killed that movie. I just want to see him in a in a in a role where he's like not funny at all. Kind of like Robin Williams in um, Good Will Hunting. Yeah, exactly like that. Yeah. Yep. Because that was a great movie, and I told you it was a great movie. Perfect movie. Yeah, that was. I think good that one. one for me is my perfect the, the perfect movie. Yeah, Good Will Hunting. Great fucking movie, dude. It's a it's a movie that makes me cry and it gives me chills like eighteen times throughout. Yeah. It's like God that sequence with Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. I watch it. I I watch it on YouTube all the time because it's my, one of my favorite scenes ever. And it's like this, the randomest scene either. And it's like the scene where Ben Affleck's giving him the pep talk. Pep talk and like Matt Damon's like, uh, you know, come back. We watch the Patriots game. I don't know. You know, we have our fucking kids fucking around. And then Ben Affleck's like, if you're still here, like, and when we're fucking 50, I'm going to fucking kill you. And that whole sequence, you're just like, fuck. That's so cool. He wants more for his friend, you know? Yeah. He's like, any of these guys would fucking do anything to be in the position you're in. You're sitting on a lottery ticket, and you're so much, you're too much of a bitch to cash it in. And it's like you've seen that that whole speech. You're just like, that's fucking dope. Yeah. And then that sequence with uh, Robin Williams and Matt Damon, where like uh, Robin Williams gets like the paperwork about his childhood and his upbringing, and he's like, you know, you have any experience with that? And he's like, yeah, my my dad used to beat the shit out of me too. And then he's like looking at all of like these little pictures of him like all scarred up from his orphanage home and shit. Yeah. And then that he asks him, um, yeah, he used to put a, a belt, uh, what do you say, a belt, a tree branch, and a, and a wrench on the table and tell me to pick one. And he would beat the fuck out of me with it. And then Robin Williams asked him, he's like, which one did you choose? He said, I went with the wrench every fucking time. And he's like, why did you do that? And he's like, because fuck him, that's why. Yeah. And you just watch that, you're like, fuck. And then it ends off, and it makes me cry every time where he goes, he looks up at him, he goes, Will, it's not your fault. And he's like, I know. And he says it 18 times, and then he just periodically goes like, I know it's not my fault. And then he just like breaks down crying and he starts hugging him. And you're just like, fuck, that's so sad. Man. Yeah. Perfect movie for me. Yeah. To be the asshole, uh, my favorite part is when they go to the basketball court and they re- he remembers that guy used to beat the shit out of him as a kid. Yeah, and he fucks and he him fucks up. Him yeah. up. You know, yeah. That's my favorite part. He's like, hey, wait, 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 stop. <laughs> and then what's cool is his boys are like, all right, we're going to ride with you. Yeah. Like, fuck it, you know? <laughs> He's like, you don't remember me? He used to beat the shit out of me every day walking over from <laughs> school. And he starts fucking throwing hands with that fool. He's I was so like, fuck awesome. yeah. yeah. Like, imagine just someone you fucking hated the kid, treated you like shit, and you see him as a dog, and you're like, hey, motherfucker, like, I ain't little no more, you son of a bitch. We're about equal now. Yeah. You know? That was my favorite part of that movie. And then, yeah, and then that, that scene where it's it's Will and Robin Williams' char- Robin Williams's character. I'm stuttering all day today. Uh, <laughs> and they're on, like, the bench. It's okay, it'll probably keep, it'll be a perfectly on time with the way the fucking video is fucking delayed. <laughs> yeah, shit, dead ass. Um, but uh, they're on like the bench, and it's like the scene after uh, Matt Damon character, Matt Damon's uh, character like roasts him about his fucking painting and like his wife and shit. I don't remember. And they're on the bench, and then Robin Williams was like giving him a speech about like, um, like pretty much telling him like you can't find anything, and you can't experience life through books and shit. Like he's telling him, he's like, you ever fucking like he's telling pretty much telling him his life story. He's like, have you ever went to war and just had your best friend just gasping for air, asking for your help, and you can't do shit, and you just watch him fucking die in front in your hands? And he's like, have you ever done that? Have you ever actually been into the fucking cathedral and looked up at the fucking, 
you know, glass panes and shit. He's like, have you ever done this? Have you ever done that? And he's just sitting there and he's like, gives him this whole speech. He was like, you know, you're a fucking genius, dude. Like, get your shit together, pretty much. That whole sequence is also fucking cool. I'm, I want to rewatch that movie again. It's, yeah. it's a perfect movie for me. Yeah. I want you to watch Legend of the Fall. Like... I'm going to watch that. And there's that one movie that I still haven't fucking watched, and it's because I don't think it's on Netflix anymore, or I just don't find it. I couldn't find it. Road to Perdition? Um, yeah, I think so. It's on Netflix again. It is. Okay, so I'm going to yeah. watch that one. Too. That's the one with Tom Hanks, right? Yeah. There's Crazy also one... ass movie, yeah. too. I want to watch that one. There's a lot of shit I want to watch, but uh, my problem is I stack too much shit. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm still, I still have to finish this anime that I'm watching that Lizzie wanted me to watch, Hunter Hunter. I, uh, I want to catch up on Flash. I want to stay up to date with Loki. So yeah, I want to try to make up time for that. Um, what is, what would be? Hold on, let me think of something I want to talk about. What would be the definition of a? What constitutes a perfect movie for you? What would make a movie perfect for you? In all aspects? In all aspects. So you, I feel like you have to have good music. Mm-hmm. The music's got to be right. Uh, and then the, the basics, too. You have to have uh, good storytelling, character development, um, perfect casting. Yeah. Because you could have someone there that they forced on there, and you're just like, it's a mm-hmm. good movie, but you... Like, I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but like, F, Fast Furious 9 was ruined for me by John Cena. Yeah. Great wrestler. I love him in, in WWE. But, like, he's not Dominic Toretto's brother. Yeah. It didn't make any sense. Like, it, it just... Like it was movie. horrible for me. Have, it's, it's bad casting in a great movie. Yeah. So, like, that killed it for me. So, good casting, great storytelling, uh, character development. Um, there has to be that, that shock and awe factor where you're like... Oh, fuck, you know, because like we were talking about, it, it sucks when you can predict it, but when there's a, one or two scenes, you're like, whoa, where the fuck did that come from? That was pretty funny, or that was pretty cool. Yeah. You know, there has to be that, too, for me, for a good movie. I would I would agree with you, and I just thought of another question that I I, 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 I really like, and I actually thought about it. Who are, what is a, what would be, for any genre, a perfect cast, five actors? Or actresses, just a, a, a perfect cast. Five, you cho- get to choose only five. I guess it depends on uh, the story too. I, I got my answer. I would if I don't care if the movie fucking sucked. I would love to see a movie with Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, Seth Rogen. Um, I was gonna say James Franco, but apparently that dude's a fucking weirdo now. Um, Seth Rogen, Simon Pegg. Nick Frost, Bill Hader. The first two guys you named, I don't know who the fuck they are. Simon Pegg and Nick Frost are um, uh, Shaun of the Dead. Oh, yeah. Love those guys. They're fucking hilarious. I would love to see a movie because they make a bunch of fucking dope movies together. Yeah. Um, Nick Frost and Simon Pegg. They grew up best friends. That's cool. Like in school and shit, and they were just like it. So like originally, I, what I loved about hearing was Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead also close to perfect for me. As a yeah. comedy movie, it's one of the a good comedy zombie movie. One of the most like perfectly made like flicks for what it is. You know, I don't think a movie has to be like for like what makes a a perfect movie for, for me is a movie that like isn't I don't know, I like a movie that it doesn't kind of it just stays on where it's like genre is at like it stays on topic almost yeah like an action movie needs to have good act like i just love Shaun of the dead because it's like it's a comedy horror flick but it's so unapologetically unapolog- like dramatic at times you get just, each genre like there's parts where you're yeah. like oh shit that's scary and there's parts where like that's fucking hilarious you know because i feel like with movies they'll try to like in an action movie they'll try to force in comedy scenes where it's like dude that's not what this movie is like, yeah. i don't know why you're trying so hard to be funny you know like there's like when they stay within their fucking identity almost in a way and they don't try to like do dumb shit or like try to experiment so much you know i don't know i don't know what i'm trying to say but like Shaun of the dead is one of the most perfectly made fucking movies for me as yeah, a, like, I love that for movie what too. it is it's pretty fucking good it's a fucking comedy horror flick and that's what it is yeah and then they just it, i just fucking love that movie so simon peck and nick frost because they all those two that's a duo that's a, like they're like they're probably the best like uh comedy acting duo in Britain or the London or whatever the fuck they're from. Um, <laughs> I would love to see like 
two Brits collaborate with like Seth Rogen, fucking Bill Hader, and like Jonah Hill. Yeah. And like, do you like us where like uh, maybe they make a movie where it's like Seth Rogen, Jonah Hill, and Bill Hader? They like t- are traveling to like Europe or something. Yeah. And they meet Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, and shit goes down. Uh, for me, I, I feel like uh, only one guarantee would be Denzel Washington because, like, mm-hmm. name a bad Denzel Washington movie. It's like you can't. can't. Like, every movie he's ever made one of the goats. has been fucking a great movie. One of the goats. So, like, I think he would have to be in it, and I don't know who else, you know? Like, depends if it's an action movie. Like, I like Jason Statham. I think he'd be fucking dope in it, you know? I don't know. I Yeah, I... I just I, I just like to with that question I like to think about like who would I want to see collaborate where it's like you don't really see them like interact a lot who would I want to see in like the same fucking movie you know like I like Bill many Hader. people that like, you've never seen in a movie together like Denzel and Brad Pitt and uh who well, who's never been in a movie with those two guys because they're always their own fucking stars yeah Tom Cruise yeah uh fuck I don't know. Like, yeah. they're their own stars, so they never needed each other. Mm-hmm. Imagine making the ultimate action movie. Kind of like how they, uh, how uh, St- Stallone did with The Expendables. He yeah. brought every action star possible to make these badass movies. And say what you want, some of them are corny, but it's still badass to see all these fucking Guys old together. school fucking badass actors in one fucking show, you know, one yeah. movie. And that's what I was saying, like... I guess that's kind of what my question was, was like, even if the fucking movie sucked dick, like, who would you just want to see on the screen again? Yeah, The Expendables was great because of that. Yeah. yeah that's a good so, point. Yeah, so, like um, yeah, I would probably say those five, and if I'm going for a serious movie, I'd go, like, um, I'd go, um, probably Brad Pitt, DiCaprio, Damon, um, just get, like, a star-studded lineup. Uh, Brad Pitt, Matt Damon, you know, fuck that. Go uh for the old, the original. Go Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, Seth Rogen, Bill Hader, and Ryan Reynolds. That would be a fucking hilarious movie. Sometimes I feel like Ryan Reynolds tries too hard. Ryan Reynolds plays himself in every movie. Yeah, and that's why sometimes he gets a little stuck because you're like he's just playing himself. Yeah, which is not wrong. He's he's fucking hilarious. But. Yeah, you should watch uh the Tiger Belly episode with uh Michael Bisping. That shit was pretty fucking funny. He had one with Michael Bisping? Yeah, and Bisping's a funny motherfucker, dude. Like, he's a pretty yeah, fucking yeah, funny yeah. dude, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch that one. Um, speaking of, like, other podcasts, you got into Tiger Belly? Oh, I love Tiger Belly. Have you have you been watching, like, every every episode, no matter who's on it? Or no, do you so just pick and choose? I, I pick and choose people I like. Yeah. That I know that's of. That's fair. So, I seen the Bisping one. I was like, oh, shit, I want to watch that one. You know? Um, who did you watch? Who have you watched? Uh... Bisbean, Carlos Mencia, George Lopez, uh, what's that dude's name? You watched Giannis Papas, I think Papis, you told me. Papas, um. Chris Stefano, did you watch that one? No. You watched the Theo Vaughn one, I, I heard Theo you. Theo Vaughn, um, and what's the other dude that's always, that he roasts everybody and all his things? Uh, he's fucking funny as shit, too. Like, you can't heckle him, because he'll fucking tear you up in his things. Uh. You watched the Bill Burr one? Yeah, I watched Bill Burr. Uh, did you watch the Anthony Jeselnik one? No. Uh, the dude that plays uh, from Night at the Roxbury. No, you did watch the Anthony Jesnick one because you were saying like he had a weird voice. Oh, yeah. That uh, was the first one when I first got yeah, into yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, um, What's his name? Yeah, I'm going to pull it up right here real quick so I can see his picture. And then you're going to be like, oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, let's let's make this transition. Oh, and I've seen Tom Segura's. Tom Segura's fucking hilarious. And then uh, Chris Kattan's. And she is, oh, there it is, uh, Adam Schultz. Oh, uh, yeah, Andrew Schultz. Andrew he's, Schultz, yeah. He's fucking, yeah, he is fucking hilarious. And I was telling you this, it's interesting. I'm from California, born and raised in California. But my fucking humor is New York humor. And I Pauly lo- Shore. Pauly Shore, yeah. yeah His was funny, too. Pauly Shore, yeah, he's fucking hilarious. Um, Don't ever say you have New York humor, I'll, I'll beat you in, on this podcast. Dude, uh, go ahead my humor... I, I I was telling you this. I got on a kick of watching comedy. I watch a lot of stand up comedy. I, I just watch a lot of podcasts with comedians. Oh I I watch a lot of podcasts with comedians. I watch a lot of stand up comedians. I watch like a lot of comedy movies. Like I just got on a huge kick of just watching comedians and like discovering new comedians. Like that's kind of been my thing. Is like, oh, I've never heard of this comedian. Like, let's see if I find him funny. And dude, I've I I've watched so many, and most of them, if not. Every single one that I thought was just fucking hilarious, New York. 
from New York. I don't know what it is about those guys from New York. I don't know if it's because they're ruthless, they're just careless. They're dorky motherfuckers, that's why. Yeah, West I Coast. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's like they're just more ruthless out there, they're just more of assholes out there. I don't know, but like from California, though, I think Tom Segura's from California. Um, Bobby Lee, I think, is from California. There's uh, a lot of. I know they're out here now. They're, yeah, they're out here now. There's a lot of fucking hilarious comedians from California. So don't get me don't get me wrong. Yeah. With that. New York makes comedians. California makes gangsters. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I, I I love comedians in fucking New York. I don't know why. I just think they're fucking hilarious. Andrew Schultz. I think. Yeah, from New Schultz York. is fucking hilarious. So dude. fucking funny. Like um, you literally, there's no way he will ever get heckled. No. If you try, you're going to get he will fucking, fucking destroyed. Yeah, he will fucking destroy you. Yeah. Like, I would never make a peep. Like, if I had a piss, I wouldn't even get up in the middle of his show because I'd be worried that he'd fucking roast me for getting up taking a piss. I'd fucking hold it. Dude, okay, I'd rather take 100%. Shit. I'm like, there's no way I'm putting attention to myself. And you got this me fucked up. Yeah, and you got me <laughs> fucked up if, th- if you think I'm sitting in the front. Yeah, there's no fucking way. He will pop off. Yeah. He goes for everybody that he could see. And it's not, like, stupid shit. Like, he, it, like, he gets you... Where, like, you would have to laugh at yourself, too. Like, fuck. Yeah. It's one of those things. And he's, like, one of those comedians. He has the same respect that Bill Burr has in the sense of, like, he could joke about whatever the fuck he wants. Because he don't care. Because yeah. he don't care, and he goes for everybody. Yeah. Just I, like I re- Bill Burr. I definitely respect people like that because, like we were talking about earlier, everybody's just too sensitive. Like, there's certain topics that, yes, should be addressed and are not right. But there's people that just take it to the extreme, and you're like, get the fuck out of here with that shit, dude. Yeah. Like, stop being a bitch. And what pisses me off are the people who bitch and complain about jokes. Yeah. And expe- fucking joke. And especially if it's like, let's, okay, like for an example, you want to know what fucking bothers me the most? My One of my biggest pet peeves when it co- comes to comedy. Let's say Bill Burr is making a joke about Asians. It doesn't, and it's a funny joke. What pisses me off are the fucking white people who will come in there and be like, "This isn't right. He deserves to get fucking fired. Like he he needs a he's like he's a fucking piece of shit and he needs to <laughs> pay his consequences." <laughs> it's like, shut up, fucking Brittany, from fucking Karen. Colorado. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Are you Asian? No. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Please, please be quiet. Uh, if it's an Asian joke and it has nothing to do with you, stop fucking complaining. Yeah, let the people they, that it's, it's going people, after let them white, complain. I mean, for, for the record, my dad's Mexican, mom's white, so I could fucking make fun of white people <laughs> I want. I fucking, they're so, they just bitch and complain about everything. It's like, dude, can you stop? <laughs> you were, you had slaves for most of your, fu- your ancestors had slaves. You guys didn't go through fucking shit. You guys just love for no reason just coming up with some fucking reason to bitch and complain about something that has nothing to fucking do with you. Yeah. It's like, dude, shut up. If Asians found that joke funny, then shut up. Yeah. But if they didn't find it funny, hit like on their post and retweet and shut the fuck up. Yeah. If you're not Asian, <laughs> you have no right to be mad at an Asian joke. Yeah. Shut up. And it goes to the same thing for every race. White people just need to shut up because yeah. they bitch and complain about everything. Like Bill Burr was on fucking like an award yeah. show. I think it was like the Oscars. No, it was the Grammys, and he, I don't know why fucking Bill Burr's at the Grammys, but they had him, like, uh, announcing, like, one of the fucking uh, awards, and it was for, like, Latin whatever. Bill Burr made a, a joke that I thought, I gave me, it got a chuckle out of me about, like, Latins or whatever. He said something, like, literally, I think he literally said, like, oh, white people are going to be mad that I'm announcing this, this award, and <laughs> what do you know? Fucking everybody bitched on Twitter about it. Why the fuck would he make this joke? Looked at the profile pictures, most of them were fucking white. Dude, shut up. Shut up. I hate that shit. It's fucking annoying. annoying. Fuck. And it's like, yeah, so that's why I like people like Bill Burr and Andrew Schultz because they have this respect where it's like, and Anthony Jeselnik too, where it's like they could joke about whatever they want. The people who are buying their tickets and going to see them know exactly what they're going to get yeah. and the kind of jokes that they're going to make. If you don't like it, don't go. Then don't if you don't like it, it don't, don't go. go and shut the fuck up. Don't watch it. Yeah, shut up. You know, You know what you're getting when you're going to their shows. And one thing that Bill Burr said is he's like, yeah, the reason why people don't really fucking bitch at me all the time is because I fucking roast everybody. <laughs> I don't give a fuck who you are, what's in between your legs. I don't care which side you're on. I'm going to fucking roast you. Like, he, he goes for fucking people who are leftists, and they, he went for people that are rightists. Like, he just went for fucking everybody. Yeah. 
Like, he doesn't give a fuck if you voted for Trump or not. He will fucking roast you. I think Bill Burr said that on the Tiger Belly one where he yeah. was like, I'm going to go to Texas. When I'm in these two states, I'm going to go after Biden. When I'm in these two states, I'm going to go after Trump. I don't yeah. give a fuck. You know? <laughs> yeah. like, and I fucking love and, uh, Bill Burr for that and Andrew Schultz and Anthony Justin because they have yeah. that kind of respect where it's just like, you know what you're going to get, so you can't fucking bitch at them. Yeah, you watch the Bisbing one because he uh, he goes after people that are like, Anti mask wearers and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And he was like, he said, he goes, usually I, sh- I shut the fuck up. I don't say nothing to nobody. I just mind my business. And then one of the guys uh, that I grew up with in, in London made a comment and he was like, and I had to fucking pop off back. And the guy replies back, oh, wow, I would have thought more of you. And Bisbee goes, really, motherfucker? You dropped out of school at 16 years old <laughs> and you think you know fucking better than scientists and people that dedicated their life to medicine and you know fucking better, Mr. 16 year old dropout? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, yeah. Bisbee goes in, and dude, dude. To the anti maskers and the people who come up with fucking conspiracy theories. Ah, oh, just fucking about follow the, the rules. Wear the dude. fucking mask, dickhead. Just follow the rules. Yeah, shut the fuck up, fucking Joffrey. God. Dude, wear your fucking mask. And it's like, no, it's just, it's a fucking conspiracy. The government made the coronavirus. Dude, I, they're like, the people who are like, I'm not going to wear my mask. It's my fucking right. I'm like, okay, dude, I hope you fucking go home and like something bad hope, happens to you. I hope you fucking lose your legs or something. I don't know. Like you That's fucking deserve up. it. You fucking idiot. <laughs> it's like, wear your mask, douchebag. And, and it's then, like, just have respect if if it's, if it's you're fucking immune, whatever the fuck, you you don't think it's going to hurt you. Just have raising, respect, enough respect for other people. For other people, yeah. And you're raising your kids to, to fucking say it's okay to not follow the law, follow the ignorant. rules, and be ignorant. Like, just follow the fucking rules. Where is is it so fucking bad to put a mask over your face? Is it so fucking bad? It's not right. Dude, calm the fuck down, man. I can't fucking breathe. It's like, dude, shut up. Then lose weight, Karen. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, dead ass. Can't breathe because you're fucking fat. And, dude, the people who fucking complain about the vaccine, too. They're like, I'm not taking the vaccine. It's a fucking conspiracy. Yeah. They're going to plant microchips. They're going to fucking... The people who take the vaccine they're are going to get track wiped us. out. What the fuck do you think your cell phone does? <laughs> yeah, you fucking idiot. It and also tracks too, you. And also, too, if the fucking vaccine kills us, how the fuck would that make sense? I heard, I forget who said it. It might have been Bill Burr. I forget who said it, but they said something that was so fucking accurate. They go, um, wouldn't you think it would make more sense for them to kill people who didn't fucking get the vaccine? Like, if they wanted to wipe out half of the population, don't you think they'd want to keep the ones who followed the fucking rules and actually yeah, took the vaccine? exactly. He's like, if anything, the people who are going to get the vaccine, they're going to unleash another fucking virus that's going to kill the people who didn't take it. If anything, if they're going to fucking, if your conspiracy about them wiping out half of the population is true, that's most likely going to fucking happen. Dude, and fucking Bisping had a good point, too, in there, too, and he was talking about it, and he was going off. He was saying that uh, a lot of people are saying, oh, it only affects old people. It's not a big deal. They had a, a great life. He was like... What if it was reversed and it only attacked the youth and our young people? He was like, our generation, our grandparents would do everything in our fucking power to protect our kids and our children. Mm-hmm. Why is it when it's opposite and it's the old people, it's like, ah, fuck it, they're old already. Yeah. He's like, how fucking selfish is that? And yeah, it's like, so fuck, selfish. that's true. Like, if it was reversed and it was attacking young kids, the entire world would do everything possible to save the kids. Yeah, 100%. It's like, it's fucking ridiculous, dude. Yeah, and I was talking to this girl about it. I'm like, dude, like, just people, like in society nowadays just fucking forget that p- human beings are human beings yeah you know it's like dude like some people just kind of look at other people like they're objects like they're not real and it's like dude i hate fucking people who don't look at human beings like yo this person's complex he's doesn't matter the fucking age this is a complex human being like it's a fucking human being it has, yeah. a, it has a heart and soul too yeah you know and so it's like yeah, for the people who are like fucking, we're gonna turn into fucking zombies. It's like, <laughs> dude, why the fuck would the government do that? Yeah. Why would what, like if anything, like I said, if anything, they're gonna wipe out the population who didn't take the vaccine because yep. if anything, the government would want want the people who would fucking listen. They want sheep, if anything. Hundred percent. Like, mm. it doesn't make any fucking sense, and um, yeah. So I think we're getting close to the end of this episode. I'm sorry for how fucking. I don't know. We came super unprepared. I just felt like this one was kind of lackluster in a way. I felt like I stuttered a lot. We didn't really... There was a lot of dead air. I, I, whatever. Fuck it. If it, you guys enjoyed it... We once it, again, but... this has always been for me and you. Yeah, uh, we enjoy doing it. Like, Not complaining, but we've lost viewers. We went from averaging 60 viewers an uh, episode to about 25. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all right. you know. So those 25 that keep showing up every week, we appreciate you guys. Um, 
the people that did send in questions, quite a few people put in questions for us. Um, um, it just wasn't enough for an episode, so we kind of went off on our own little thing here. So we will get to your questions. It's just probably in the next one. Uh, are you doing your solo next week? Yeah, so it's my solo next week, and the week after we'll probably answer all those questions. And we'll answer all the questions. So uh, so next week's episode 9, right? Episode 9, yeah. And then the following episode is episode 10. So, uh, spoiler alert, episode 10, we're going to have a few guests. Some surprise guests. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to that episode because that's yeah. going to be a bomb episode. Yeah, so be ready. Episode 10. Uh, watch all of, them, all of them. Get caught up, guys. Watch Xander next week on his solo. And then a surprise first ever guest on the podcast. Yeah, it's going to be weeks. it's gonna be fucking awesome. Um, yeah, so make sure you leave a like. Make sure you comment down below some questions for me for my solo episode. Uh, because I think the ones we got were for the... Uh, for us together. For us together. So yeah. we're going to post on our Instagrams and shit. Ask us questions about uh, whatever. Or ask me questions about whatever. I'm going to answer them next week. Um, Mondays every week at 9.30 a.m. in the morning. Uh, PST. Um, you can find me at Bucky Barney on Twitter with two Ys at the end of Barney. Um, on Twitter and on Twitch, if you want to watch me live stream, I'm thinking about making a comeback to YouTube, Big Xander OP3 on YouTube. Um, and then you can find the podcast at S-I-A-E Podcast on Twitter and also Stuck in Elevator Podcast on Instagram and TikTok. I'm going to get on that. I've been fucking lacking on that shit. I'm going to get on that. I'm gonna, we're going to try to release clips from our favorite moments from each episode um, to try to get people to... You know, just for newer faces to kind of uh, get a grasp of what we're going to be talking about in the episode. Because I know a lot of podcasts yeah. do that, where they'll have like a 30-second clip of a funny moment in the podcast. And then the new people who don't know who we are, they'll watch that and be like, oh, that's kind of fucking funny. I want to see how the rest of that conversation went. And then they come to the podcast and they watch it. Um, I got to get on that. But, uh, yeah, you can find all the links in the description down below. Um, if you want anything said to this man right here, he doesn't have any social media, but he does run the Instagram uh, Stuck on the Elevator podcast. He does run the Instagram. So you have any questions or you want to talk or whatever, reach out to him. You just go to the podcast because he runs that. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it, right? Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah. Just real quick, I uh, want to dedicate this uh, episode to my buddy uh, Danny who passed away. Uh, suddenly, young guy, sh- gone away too early. Uh, love you, brother. Uh, this one's for you, man. Yeah, it's fucking whack, dude. Uh, rest in peace. And I think that's it. I'm sorry for the camera. We're going to fix everything next week, but uh, that's that. Yeah, cool.